In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a, an example of what we call Hicksian decomposition. Looking at the Slutsky equation that basically says that when a price changes, there are two different reasons why we will buy less or buy more. One is an income effect, one is a substitution effect. The income effect is because we feel richer or poorer because of the price change, and the substitution effect says that uh, some of the difference in the amount we buy is because the relative prices have changed. So in this one we're going to look at a price decrease just to see what some of the little changes um, might be and, and to make sure that you know how to interpret and explain what's going on. It's too easy to get caught up in the math, but I want to I want to make sure that you really understand what we're doing, why, and and what it all means. And it's it's a lot to do, but let's get started here. So um, what we're going to be looking at is uh, the price of a good decreasing. So there there are kind of three steps here to what we're going to do. First, we're given an initial situation, something that's going on, and so here is our initial situation. We have a utility function, u equals x to the point 4 times y to the point 5, a standard Cobb-Douglas kind of utility function here. We're going to start with the price of x being $5 and the price of y being $10 and a budget of $200 to start with here. And so there are three steps. Let me just go through the overview here briefly. The three steps are first, find what combination of X and Y uh, maximizes the utility of this consumer. Then you're going to analyze a price change. So what happens, for example, if here we're going to look at the price of Y going from 10 in the first situation to 5 in the second situation. Then we're going to find that optimal combination that maximizes the utility. So we're doing two utility maximization problems. Now what makes this uh, interesting is the third part that we're going to do down here. Uh, we're going to find the decomposition basket which is a hypothetical solution asking what kind of basket would the person buy if we were able to give them the old utility level at the new prices. So what if we made this person as happy as they were before the price change? How much money would it take and what would they buy at these new prices? But we're taking them back to the old utility level. That'll let us uh, separate out the income and substitution effects. So um, if, if you want this sheet, I'm going to put this sheet uh, here on my website, which is www.berkeyacademy.com. Uh, so if you go to that website, uh, look on the left side of the website under the files section. I'll put this uh, so that you can download the same worksheet, print it out, and work with it along with the video. I think that'll, that'll be helpful for you. So let's get started here. So to do a, any kind of utility maximization problem, you're going to have two equations. And the two equations you, you want to look at are this first one, that the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices. Second equation is the budget line. I have other videos where I talk about these in depth. I'm not going to go through them in depth right here. I'm just going to go through the solution and focus on the, uh, the interpretation mostly. So if you want to solve this yourself, pause the video now and then follow along and make sure you did something similar to what I'm doing here. So. This first equation, uh, the marginal rate of substitution shortcut method for uh, uh, Cobb-Douglas is the, um, sorry, the, let me get this pin to do what I want it to do here. I held it down too long. Okay, so about 0.4 divided by 0.5, that's just uh, these exponents here and then y on the top, x on the bottom. There's a lot of math that goes into that, but that's what the marginal rate of substitution is going to boil down to for this Cobb-Douglas here. Equals the ratio of the prices, x over y. So x is 5, y is 10, so that's 1 half, simple enough. The um, budget line, uh, 5x, since the price of x is 5, 
plus 10y equals the budget, which is $200 here. Okay. So these are our two equations, even though that's an ugly two. Let me see if I can... Okay, there we go. That's a little better. So we want to take these two equations here and solve for two unknowns. So w the way I would attack this is... Uh, Generally, I'll solve for y or x uh, out of this marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices function, and then substitute it in to this budget line. So let's see. Looks like we're going to have, if I rearrange that, something like 0.25x equals 0.4y, and we're going to get something like x equals uh, 1.6y here. Okay, so now that we know that x is 1.6y, I'll plug it in here for x, and we get uh, 5 times 1.6y plus 10y equals 200. And then if we solve that for y, let's see what I'm going to get here. Let's see, we're going to have uh, 18y equals 200. 200 divided by 18 says uh, we're going to have 1.11 y's in this case. Okay, sorry, 11.11 y's. And then um, how many x's are we going to have? Well, using this uh, relationship right here, x is 1.6 times the number of y's. X equals 1.6 times 11.11. So. Going to get 17.78 uh, approximately, and again, don't don't get excited if if the way you round gives you slightly different numbers. That's okay. We're going to be relaxed about that. So we have uh, the uh, amount of x, the amount of y, and the last thing I want to know here is is exactly how much utility do we get. So u equals. We're just going to plug these numbers right here into this utility function right up here and see how much utility we get. So let's see, x 17.78 raised to the 0.4 make sure that's the 0.4 that you're doing there, times 11.11 raised to the 0.5 and I'm getting about 10.54 utils here. 10.54. We'll need that in a little while. Plus, it's just, I think, interesting to see how much utility is the maximum value, since that's really what this problem here is about. Now, something changes. One of the prices changes is what's going on here. And so, uh, when the price changes to 5, so the price of Y is going down, that should mean we're going to buy more Y, and we're going to be happier. So, let's do the problem and make sure that that's what we actually get here. So we're going to have the same MRS 0.4 over point, uh, y over 0.5x equals um, and instead of the ratio of the prices being one half now the price of x is 5 and the price of y is 5. And so what's the ratio of prices going to be? 1 of course. So uh, x is 5, y is 5 equals 1. That's going to simplify our life a little bit here for just doing a little bit of math here. The budget line is going to change a little bit too because it's going to be 5x plus 5y since the price of y is now 5 equals uh, 200. And okay. Pause it. Solve it. Come back if you want to do it on your own. I encourage you that if you're doing this for a class or if you really want to learn it, pause the video now and do it. Okay, so if you're back, we have uh, 0.4y equals 0.5x, or we can rewrite that, let's see, 0.4y equals 0.5x, whoop, sorry, 0.5x, um, in this case I would probably, yeah, solve for x again, uh, multiply both sides by 2, and we're going to get x equals 0.8y again. Solve that, substitute that in there for x right there. And we're going to get 5 times 0.8y. 5 times 0.8 is 4, so we're going to end up with 4y plus 5y equals 200. 9y equals 200, so 
200 divided by 9 is going to give us 22.22 Ys. 22.22. And um, the X's is going to be 0.8 times that. And um, 0.8 times Y is going to give us X equals 17.78. Now, let me point out here. A, an interesting, sometimes useful, but sometimes incorrect uh, result that you get every single time when you are using a Cobb-Douglas uh, utility function. Every single time. So, so just note this. If you're using a Cobb-Douglas utility function, if you raise the price of Y or lower the price of Y, as we did in this case, it went from um, 10, 2, 5, um, but you're not changing the price of X, and you compare those two solutions, what's going to happen every single time is the amount of X isn't going to change since the price of X didn't change. Sometimes that makes sense in the real world when you're looking at two different kinds of products. Sometimes it makes no sense whatsoever. So you have to understand before you start using this to analyze a real world situation, your utility function has to match real behavior. So with, with uh, Cobb-Douglas, if you change the price of Y, the solution for the amount of X won't change. The amount of Y will, though. It, ha it obeys the law of demand, or if the price of Y goes down, the amount of Y is going to go up. Okay, now let's see how much utility we get here when we do this. So plug these values in to the same utility function, and see what you get. Do it. Don't just watch me. Come on. You can do it. 17.78 um, raised to the 0.4 times. 22.22 raised to the uh, 0.6, sorry, 0.5 equals, okay, 14.9, 14.9, we'll call it 14.91 here. Um, so, what happened? The price of Y went down, we were able to afford the same amount of X, we bought more Y, our utility went up. Okay, nothing strange so far. Now, what we want to do is answer the question, how much of this increase in Y? We doubled our amount of Y that we're consuming. Here we were uh, consuming 11.11, here 22.22. How much of that doubling, how much of that increase of 11.11 is caused by uh, the consumer feeling wealthier because the price went down. It's like your income went up. And how much of it is due to the fact that the ratio of the prices used to be one half, right, right here, when um, the price of Y was higher, and um, now the ratio of the prices uh, are they're equal, one over one. That's the substitution effect. So how we do this is we come up with this decomposition basket. It's a hypothetical solution. Let me uh, erase that right there. Um, it's a hypothetical solution that separates out the sub, uh, substitution and income effects. So how you do it is you have two equations. One equation is your utility function equals the old utility level, 10.54. The second equation is the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices, but we use the new ratio of the prices. So here are our two uh, equations. The utility function is, of course, let me change to, uh, to a different color here, x to the, all right, x to the point four y to the point 0.5 equals 10.54. We're asking, okay, we want this person to go back to the low amount of utility that they had before the price decrease, but we want to see um, 
how the prices would affect them. So they're at the old utility, how would the prices change their decisions at the old utility level? How could we do that? So here we have the same marginal rate of substitution right there, um, 0.4y over 0.5x equals new ratio of the new prices, 1. Very simple there. So how are we going to solve these two? Same kind of method. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cheat a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to use work we already we already did. Um, we already solved this same thing right here, right here, and right here. We already solved it. Why duplicate your work? Uh, and we found that x has to be equal to 0.8y. So we might as well just write that down. X equals 0.8y. But now we have to plug this identity, uh, x equals 0.8y, or this relationship, into the utility function here. So x to the 0.4, plug in 0.8y to the 0.4. So let me, I'm going to erase this to give us a little bit more room. You understand what we did. It's, it's already right up here. So um, here we go. Let me see. Go with purple. X. Oh, sorry. Wasn't supposed to do that. We're talking, we're plugging in 0.8y to the 0.4 times uh, y to the 0.5 equals 10.54. Okay, and so here you just have to realize that if you have a quantity in parentheses raised to a power, that's the, you can distribute that power to the point 0.8 and the point y. So we have point 0.8 to the point 0.4 power. y to the point 0.4 times y to the point 0.5 equals 10.54. And now we want to divide both sides by this point 0.8 to the point 0.4 to get rid of it. And so uh, I'll just do that numerically here. Point 0.8 raised to the point 0.4 power is uh, point 0.915, I'll call it. And I'm just going to divide both sides by that to get rid of it. At the same time, I'm going to collect the point, the y to the point 0.4 and the y to the point 0.5. So we'll do two things here in one step. y to the point 0.4 times y to the point 0.5 is y to the point 0.9 equals, and then 10.54 divided by that 8.8 .8 to the point 0.4. I'm going to call that 0.915. 10.54 divided by 0.915 equals 11.52. I'll call it 11.52. And now we have to get rid of that 0.9 exponent on the y. And in order to get rid of an exponent, um, what you do is raise both sides to the 1 over that exponent. And so whatever it is, 1 over that exponent. So uh, raise it to the 1 over 0 0.9, and that'll get rid of that. And then we just raise this side to the 1 over 0 0.9 um, power there. 1 over 0 0.9 is 11.11111. And so y equals 11.52 raised to the 1.11111. Okay, so I get an answer of about 15.11. And again, if your answer is slightly different, you you know, I rounded things in the calculator a little bit. Don't get too excited about it. Um, but now, okay, 15.11 y's is is how many y's this person would buy to get them to the old lower utility level, but if the prices were equal to each other at five dollars each. Um, now, how many x's? Well, here we're going to go back up to this same same relationship right here, x equals 0.8y. So um, multiply that by 0.8. So 15.11 times 0.8, 12, eh, about 12.09. So x equals 12.09. OK. So let me, let's just review one more time what we've done, why, and what it means. Because if, if you don't get that, the rest of it, there's no point. 
So we looked at this consumer with this utility function and we solved how what would this person buy to maximize their utility given this budget constraint prices of 5 10 and 200 then we we said how would this com consumer change their decisions if the price of y dropped to 5 now what we're doing is saying okay hypothetically what would happen if we put this person back in the world where they got their old utility level but they were being charged the new prices what would happen and we found that here um, they'd buy 15.11 y's 12.09 x's and there's one last question that I always want to uh, to ask as soon as I get this new solution here for this decomposition basket this hypothetical I want to know how much it costs. How much would it cost at the new prices to do this uh, to get this old utility level? So let's calculate that. We, what we're assuming is that Y are five dollars each and X are five dollars each. So let's just uh, multiply that there. So 15.11 times five plus 12.09 times five. I'm getting 136 dollars would be our budget. 136 bucks. Now why is that important? Well, we started off this problem uh, talking about this person having a budget of 200 up here. And with a budget of 200, this person could achieve a utility level of 10.54 when the prices were $5 for X and $10 for Y. What we've learned by going through this exercise is um, this person now with the lower price for Y could achieve that same old utility level that they're getting, uh, that they were getting before the price dropped. If they said, you know, the prices have dropped. I want to stay the same happiness as I, as I used to have. How can I do that now with these lower prices? That's what we've just that's the question that we're answering here. And this person can achieve that lower utility much more cheaply uh, now that the prices are lower. So uh, $136. So they're saving uh, $64 is how much less they would have to spend if they, um, if they only wanted to get the same happiness level as before. So this could be useful, for example, if, if the prices of prescription drugs and home ownership and, and gasoline for, for people on welfare uh, were decreasing for some reason, or just the price of one thing, one major expense, like um, uh, apartment rents. Suppose the government lowered apartment rents for people on welfare. We can figure out, OK. Um, now how much less money how much less cash assistance can we give people on welfare so that they would be the same same happiness level same utility level as before well now we could pay them sixty four dollars less is what's going on now let's get to the to the meat here let's let's answer the real question of what we're trying to do finally let's talk about the Hicksian decomposition of income and substitution effects. Now there are two methods, two common methods people use. There's a, a Hicksian method or what's called the hicks caldor method and the Slutsky method. Um, you're still you're still uh, talking about the Slutsky equation. These are just two ways to look at it. The hicks caldor method is what we're doing here. hicks caldor method says um, use the old utility level in the new prices. The uh, Slutsky method I think says use the new utility level in the old prices. Either way works. Either way works. Use whatever method your professor tells you to use. Um, but let's do this decomposition. And here's here's basically what what's going on. It yeah we have three solutions here for how much y this person's buying. Let's call them A, B, and C. A is the original solution, and under the original solution, we were buying 
0.11 units of y. B is the final real solution. What are people really going to buy after this price decrease? Well, they're going to buy more. 22.22 y's is what we got. Now, um, this decomposition basket, this hypothetical solution we came up with, allows us to split this change. It's 11.11. It's a doubling. Split the change into two parts. Um, part of it is going to be an income effect. I feel richer because the price went down. Part of it will be a substitution effect. I'm buying more Y because it's now relatively less expensive than it was before. So how do we do that? Well, C is the solution that's in the middle, and that's this 15.11 Y's. And 15.11. Um, and I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to learn what's going on here. So, so let me just tell you between that one of these moves tells us the substitution effect and one of them tells us the income effect. And in order for you to remember which one or learn which one, let's graph it. You always want to graph things. So at least I always want to graph things. So let me graph what's going on here. Let me graph these three solutions here. Um, solution A on this uh, indifference curve map here. Solution A was uh, 11 Y's and um, about 18 X's, a little less than 18 X's. So 11 Y's, 18 X's, we're uh, okay, so we're right around in here. Okay, so that's point A in green. I'll go with a, a nice blue color here for the next one. Uh, then what happened after the price went down, we doubled our Y and kept X the same. That's just, I'm not saying it makes sense all the time. That's just what happens when you use a, um, a uh, Cobb-Douglas utility function. All right. My pen's giving me trouble here. Okay. There we go. If I pause too long, it uh, and that's that's what we're calling B there okay um, now C is this intermediate one the intermediate solution we got was uh, about 15 Y's and 12 X's so uh, 12 X's and 15 Y's is going to put us right around here okay I'm going to choose orange for that okay C um, in order to see which is which, we need to draw the budget lines in so you can see what's going on. Now, under uh, A, our budget line, we had $200. And if we spent all of our money um, on X, X was $5. We could buy 40 of those, right? So um, budget line goes over here. If we spent all our money on Y, we could only afford 20 because they were uh, 10 bucks. So budget line over there. Now this is the tricky part when I'm drawing with this uh, this pen on this tablet. Let me try to see if I can draw a straight line on the screen here. All right, not too bad. I used an envelope there. Um, now. The what does the budget line look like for B? Well, for B, uh, the prices were five dollars each, and so we could, uh, if we spent all our money on X, we could afford forty. If we spent all our money on Y, we could afford forty, and so that uh, when the price goes down, that rotates a budget line out. Let me see if I can draw that line relatively straight. There we go, pretty good. And uh, so that budget line rotating out is what happens when a price goes down. It rotates in when the price goes up. And now let's look at what the uh, budget line for this hypothetical looks like. We use the new prices, the new prices. That means that this new budget line is going to have a slope just like this one. It's going to have a slope that's equal to uh, 1, minus 1. Uh, but it's going to have a budget of 136. So let's roughly figure out where the where the ends of the budget line are going to be. 136 divided by 5 
136 divided by 5 is uh, about 27. So one end of this budget line, I'll do this in a nice green color. It's going to be right here. If I spend all my money on Y, I could get 27. If I spend all my money on X, I could get 27. Here's what that hypothetical situation budget line would look like right there. All right, so now you tell me, if we're going from A to C and then C to B, which of these two changes reflects a change in income and which of these reflects a change in prices? Are we changing the relative prices when we go from A to C or are we changing the income between A and C? Of course, you can see we're changing the relative prices here. Um, that's really the thing we're changing. We're holding constant utility, which is really the whole point of income, is, is to translate into utility. So we're holding utility constant, and we're kind of rotating around. We're changing the slope of the budget line. That's the biggest thing we're changing. But between the green budget line <clears throat> and the budget line for B, the biggest thing we're doing, we're not changing the prices at all. Instead, we are giving more income. We're going from $136 for the green line to $200 with the same exact prices to get from C to B. So that's the way to know. That's the way to, to remember. I never, mem I never memorize this. I just, I just think about what's going on. So the move from A to C is the substitution effect. So what we would say is um, because of this price change, we're increasing our consumption of Y by about 11. Four of that change right here from 11 to 15, four of it is the substitution effect. The remaining approximate six, you know, or about 6.11, that is the income effect. The reason people are buying that extra 6.11 is because people feel wealthier. So in this case, the larger effect, the thing that has the bigger impact on people's purchasing decisions is the fact that people feel richer uh, because this price went down. Uh, a little bit smaller part is because people are uh, changing their purchases due to the ratio of the prices, the, the relative prices changing here. Now, let me think if there's anything else that I want to point out here while I'm on it. Oh, yes. So the last thing I want to go over is just how could you phrase a summary of everything and I'm not going to write all this down but let me just state this summary of everything that we just did in kind of a press release format um, and you can rewind it and and listen to it again so let me try to be careful about this you might say okay originally and we can look at this as, as we go Originally, this customer had a budget of $200 and faced prices of X of 5 and price of Y for 10. This consumer in that situation is going to buy 11.11Ys and 17.78Xs and get 10.54 in utility. Then, this consumer saw a price go down. The price of Y went down from 10 to 5. This consumer changes their purchasing patterns by buying more Y, but buying the same amount of X. They get more utility, 14.91 more in utility. Now, we derive this decomposition basket, which is a hypothetical basket um, trying to see what happens, <clears throat> what would happen if this person faced the new prices how could we get it, make it possible that they get the old level of utility but with the same with the same new prices that we're seeing now and we found that we could do that with a budget of only $136 rather than 200 by purchasing 15.11Ys and 12.09Xs and one of the main reasons for doing this are a couple reasons number one we can see that this price change benefits this consumer in this 
specific way. It benefits them because they could now, if they wanted to, achieve the same level of utility as before, but they could save $64, 200 minus this 136. So they could be as happy as they were before and still save 64 bucks to do something else with. That's an easy way to measure the benefit of this price decrease. That's number one. Number two, we're interested to know why did the person buy so much more why when the price went down? The answer is, well, there are two reasons this person bought more why. One is the price decrease made them feel richer. They bought 6.11 more whys because they felt wealthier due to the price drop. They also bought four more why um, because the now why is relatively cheaper than it used to be compared to X. The move from point A to point C um, represents this substitution effect part. The move from C to point B illustrates graphically the income effect part of this decomposition of the income and substitution effects. So I hope uh, that helps you understand income and substitution effects. In this case, specifically, uh, what happens when you have a price decrease. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the uh, comment section below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. This is Berkey Academy, signing off.